I'd almost forgotten what Chef can do with a steak. Welcome to Sci-Fi Steak. This episode is fun. On DS9, I usually like the Ferengi episodes. And I'm sorry. Uh, nope. No, I'm not sorry. This episode makes me laugh. I like it a lot. Let's start. What happens in this episode? Six Ferengi walk into a bar and plan a hostage rescue. And against all odds, they succeed. The episode starts with Quark telling us about his latest heroics in the Syrup of Squill affair. Someone tried to drive up the prices by pretending there was no squill available. But clever Quark saw through that deception and got a shipment and will now sell the squill to his customers. To the old price, I'm sure. And everyone's applauding. Dax O'Brien and Bajir come in and steal his audience. Because, for some weird reason, people are more impressed by soldiers defending the Federation than a businessman buying syrup. Quark gets a call from the Nagus. Mugi has been captured by the Dominion. But there are also bad news. The Nagus wants Quark to rescue her. Ram doesn't want to come along, but when Quark mentions the reward of 50 bars of gold-pressed latinum, he agrees. Quark also tells Rom about Moogie and Zack being lovers. So they need a plan. Step one, get lost and accidentally crawl into Cisco's office. Step two, assembling a team. Rom suggests hiring a mercenary, for example a Norsican or a Klingon. But what would you possibly do with someone who knows how to handle a situation like this? That makes no sense. So they go with Ferengi, because people who know how to buy syrup during a drought are perfect for the job. Also, last time I checked, you had a badass warship docked at this very station. I'm pretty sure Cisco would have helped, if you had asked him. They want to pretend that the reward is only 20 bars of latinum, so they don't need to share all of the 50 bars. That's a good way to avoid conflict, especially since with Ram you have an absolutely reliable ally. So the first one they ask is Nog. He doesn't want to, but when please doesn't work, they try it with tempting his ego. Strategic officer is the rank they want to give him. That convinces Nog. He's on board. And I'm so glad that he will learn from this experience to never accept a position that's too much for him ever again. The second team member is Lack, an eliminator. He's not interested in Latinum. He's interested in a challenge. When he hears that Mugi is in the hands of the Dominion, he can barely restrain his excitement. And last, and definitely least, is Cousin Gala. They get him out of prison. And when you get someone out of prison for an important job, things always succeed. Tom Paris. So, Nock is trying to whip this bunch of promising young cadets into shape. And after exactly 47 seconds, Nock wants to quit. And things get better when they realize they don't even have a ship. Ex-liquidator Brunt enters the room and wants to join. He thinks he will get his job back when he helps to save Moogie. But despite the fact that Brunt was so helpful in the past, they don't want him. But Brunt has a ship, so he's coming along. Time to do some practice in the hollow suite. It looks pretty good, but there's still room for improvement. Quark realizes that they won't get movie out with fighting. So they decide to try it with trading. But what to trade? Squill won't do. But fortunately, there's a water in stock. Kira helps them to get Keevan, that guy they've captured in Rocks and Shoals, who has eyes you can just lose yourself in. Keevan gives a pep talk that basically goes, May whatever God you believe in have mercy on your soul. So we reach Ampok Noah. I hope no one refills the Cardassians on ice there. Nog orders them to the infirmary. No one's moving. Quark offers two slips of latinum for whoever gets there first. Everyone's running. Hope Quark doesn't run out of change before the mission is over. 
So they make camp and block the door. Keevan tells them about the horrible things that await him at home. Yeah, just wait for the horrible things that await you here. So they lie down for a nap. But a loud wailing awakes the group. Was that in any way necessary to lie so close together? The room is not that small. Keevan did the impossible and escaped while his guard was sleeping. This time it doesn't need two slips of latinum for them to run. Quark catches Keevan on the ship. He couldn't start because Rom disabled it. And now wait a minute. Quark ran out of the infirmary five seconds before the others. He talked to Keevan for 20 seconds, plus the time he needed to walk out of the ship. And now the others arrive. Did they stop for refreshments somewhere along the way? Am I making any sense here? No, but that's okay. An alarm goes off. The Dominion is coming. And they all run back to the infirmary. After hiding for a while, Nock goes to see what's happening. This is happening. Quark asks if anybody is there. Yeah, kinda. After hiding some more, they realize, wait, we invited these guys, so maybe we should go out and talk to them. The water gets impatient and calls for them. So they meet outside. Quark wants all the Jem'Hadar to leave to their ship and fly home. So they won't immediately destroy Brun's ship as soon as the prisoners are exchanged. The warder says, I could just tell all the Jem'Hadar to storm the infirmary. And Quark says, sure, you could do that, but then you wouldn't be able to interrogate Kevin because he would get shot first. Nice, Quark, nice. The warder is impressed and says, maybe someday the Ferengi will join the Dominion. Yeah, that's quite a compliment. Before the exchange, Nock wants to test if this is really Moogie and not a changeling. He gets his answer. Time for a little premature celebration. And Rom lets slip out that there are 50 bars of Latinum to win and not 20. Who would have seen this coming? So, of course, this leads to a fight, which leads to... Yeah... <laughs> but they won't give up but whatever they plan to do now could be difficult because Nock has diagnosed Keevan and he's dead Jim. but when Nock puts on his little thingies on Keevan's forehead he gets smacked so Nock gets the idea to control the corpse with neural stimulators. Quark tries to stall, but the warder runs out of patience. But he gives him five minutes, and the exchange will be outside the airlock. The exchange finally happens, and this brings back memories. Keevan hits a wall. But before they can react, Lag and Rom, yes, Rom, kill the Jem'Hadar. The warder prefers to just drop to his knees and cower while the Jem'Hadar drop their weapons where they fall. And obviously, the warder just prefers to ignore that. I mean, look at that. He's just sitting there and sitting and sitting until our heroes pick him up and take him back to DS9. Quark and Rom agree that it feels good to be a hero. And today they are. Definitely. Keevan is going to bump into the wall until the batteries run dry. Whoever comes to the station next is in for a surprise. I really enjoy this episode. I find most of the jokes funny. Rom has some really adorable moments. For example, when he welcomes Keevan on the ship. I also like that cousin Gala is back. And Lek is an interesting character. It would have been great to see him again in a later episode. The lesson of the episode is that if you are the first lady of Rangina, you maybe shouldn't drive to your lobe lifting all alone. Thank you all for listening. See you next time here at Sci-Fi Steak. Bye.